Most of us use a graphical desktop of a sort every day without really thinking about it. Windows, icons, mouse pointer, panels or docks, it's all pretty much ingrained because it's always been this way and there hasn't been much effort to try and deviate from this well-known metaphor. But since we tend to overthink things a lot in here, I thought it would be interesting to maybe take a look at some old interface conventions that we never bothered to change. From start menus to system trays, hamburger menus, windows or icons, we'll see why these things kind of suck, but we'll also see maybe a concept to try and replace them all. That's not to say that my concept is perfect or even good, and that's not to say that no one ever tried to replace these old conventions, but what's for sure is that no one really managed to make something better, just like I could never manage to make a better segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare. They provide fantastic solutions to make sure your servers and workstations stay secure and up to date with as little downtime and maintenance as possible with live patching for your Linux kernels and with extended support for distributions going end of life. And this week they're giving you free access to an ebook. This excellent resource will not only list these 10 frequent mistakes that have been gathered using insights from the NSA and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, but it will also give you an in-depth analysis of each of those misconfigurations with the impacts you can expect from them and how to mitigate those mistakes. The ebook is available for free from the link in the description below and you don't even have to enter any info to download it. So if you're in charge of the security of your organization or you know the person who is, click the link and start reading. So let's begin with the granddaddy of all interface conventions, the desktop itself. If you think about productivity and efficiency, you can't help but think that having the default state of your computer being an image with a few icons on it is less than stellar. You use a computer to do things and all of these things are slotted in tiny little icons in a panel somewhere behind a launcher or in a menu. The default state is emptiness with a mess of icons and widgets on top of it, which probably is not the best if you really think about it. Whether you prefer a file-based metaphor, where you create new files or open existing ones, no matter the app associated with it, or you prefer an app-based metaphor, in which you open an app to then open files, you have to admit, the desktop kinda sucks. For opening files, it will never be tidy enough to give you access to everything you need. You need a launcher or a folder structure, meaning the desktop is kinda bad at handling files. For opening apps, having visual shortcuts on the desktop is a duplicate of whatever panel or launcher you have, and you will never be able to display all the apps you actually need here without things becoming overloaded. This all stems from Xerox's original graphical interface, which then was copied by Apple, which then was copied by Microsoft, which then was copied by virtually every Linux desktop out there. And it was interesting at the time, it was a reflection. Your desktop is actually your desk, every app is a tool you would have on your desk, and every file is a physical file you would have on your desk. Nowadays though, most people just use a computer and the paper workflow is sort of done, so maybe this is not the best metaphor we can come up with today. The way forwards is likely going to be something predictive, where you would structure the default desktop as a dashboard with a to-do list on one side and its associated files, maybe recent files as well, stuff you haven't finished, communications on another side of the screen like email or instant messaging. You could probably accomplish all of this with desktop widgets, but these never really seem to take off as part of the desktop. Gnome also tried something along those lines, assuming that what you want to do first is opening a program and thus defaulting to the overview when you boot your computer instead of having an empty desktop. All in all, for now, we're stuck with the good old desktop. It's not completely inefficient, but it's also really not that great. You can build muscle memory around the various shortcuts that you made, but it will never be as complete or as tidy as everyone needs. Next are launchers, start menus, app grids, app lists, whatever else. If you think about it, these things aren't pretty efficient either. You have to either scroll through a list of categories, click one, then click the app you want, or you have to scroll an alphabetical list of programs, which makes no sense since most app names have no relation to what they do. 
GIMP doesn't scream image editor. Caden Live doesn't scream video editor. Gwen View doesn't scream image viewer either. Those names have no relations with what the app actually does, which is why all core apps should be named with their main function. Files, mail, photos, images, stuff like that. Now, most of these menus or grids thus added favorites to fix that, so you can place your preferred apps in a special place. But in a small menu, you will never have enough room for all your apps. And in an app grid, it requires you to reorder app icons to drag and drop, and that's never been the fastest or most precise way of doing things either. Also, it duplicates the functionality of having app shortcuts on a desktop or in a launcher or taskbar. This inefficiency is also why most app grids and menus now implement a text field that is active by default, so you can type the name of the app you're looking for, which seems good but is also not that great because it requires you to know the name of the app. As we've seen, that's not always very explicit. Or to type the function of the app, which is generally longer than the app name and so more key presses are required. Great if you're good at using a keyboard, less great if you're not, or if you have a disability. Still, we haven't really found anything better yet. We have some circle-based menus which involve muscle memory, but require a lot of user configuration beforehand. We have app grids with extra sorting on top, like in Pop! OS or GNOME with folders. But these aren't a really new way of doing things. The way I could see this evolving would be by leaving the application and the window-based metaphor behind to have a more task-based metaphor. Instead of needing one app to create an image, then another app to add that image to a presentation and add some text around it, then another app to share that presentation with an audience. The entire OS could evolve to have workflows that blend together, where apps provide simple UI blocks to the OS. You would create a file from the OS itself, no matter its type and the OS would display the relevant UI and would let you do the things you want without switching from app to app, the file would just evolve to include all the things you need in it. You would never start an app with a file type in mind, you would just start a file. And if you only need text, you just have a UI block for text and you type your text. If at some point you need an image, you just slot it inside and you don't have to switch applications to go to a word processor that supports images. If at some point you want to have multiple pages and turn that into a presentation with animations, you could just have the relevant UI block being displayed, you can summon it from a bar of commands, and you add those features and the file automatically becomes a presentation. You never really worry about the app, about the file type, or about what you're trying to do, you just do it and you save that workflow instead of saving to a specific file format. This means no more app launching, you just open a file or create a new one and everything is seamless and you don't have to figure out which app is needed to do what. The OS just grabs those UI blocks that are provided for apps and displays them for you. You never interact with an app itself. Now next is the good old system tray. This little area is probably the thing I despise the most in any operating system. That's not because it's useless, because it's really not, but it's because it's completely inefficient and illegible. You start apps from another place, and some of them will stay in the tray afterwards, some won't. Sometimes the icon disappears when you close the app's window, sometimes it won't. Sometimes the icon is colored, sometimes it's not. If you have too many things in the tray, it tends to fold, so you have an extra click to view what's running. Click targets are small and imprecise. It mixes apps and system features. Some apps will react to a right click, some will react to a left click, some will open a window, some will open a menu. It is a complete mess. It's hard to aim for it, it's not really usable with a keyboard, it's not legible, but we don't really have another way to handle those things. The closest thing is how GNOME's background apps will evolve, where you have to click on the quick settings menu to display the apps running in the background, and at some point you will get a context menu in there to interact with those apps. But this isn't a new way of doing things as much as it's just moving the system tray behind yet another click. It makes click targets bigger for each app, that's sure, but it's still an extra click. At least it makes things a little bit more uniform and it clearly splits system features from apps, but it's still not great. And I think the best way to evolve the system tray would be to just not 
need it. If you have an app that needs to run in the background to provide features, then you could just have those features displayed in a mini widget or a mini block on your dashboard. They would be hidden by your app workflow or task workflow, and you could just invoke them back again with a gesture or a screen edge or something, but you would actually see the features right there instead of having to aim for a very small icon, right clicking and doing something. It's probably not good to have them as icons, probably would be better to have them as widgets or mini features floating on your desktop. Now, the old menus. These things keep evolving and they're not getting better. The traditional menu bar is not great. It's tiny, click targets aren't big enough, keyboard navigation is slow, and the sorting of these menus is random and app dependent, meaning you have to learn where each option is and how it's named for each program you use. If you place that into a global menu, you save some space in the apps window and you're making clicking on menus easier since they're always in the same place. But it doesn't solve the menu sorting problem and the small click targets. If you place everything in a hamburger menu instead, you're simplifying the default interface, but you're making it harder to find more advanced features. Some apps try to move away from them, like GNOME apps, but in the end, even with header bars, they do tend to end up having a hamburger menu anyway or you have apps from Microsoft that gained ribbons and tabbed interfaces for a while. But again, you have small click targets, a mess of icons and text. That's not very coherent. Why is this feature just an icon in the ribbon? Why is this one an icon plus text? Why are these in specific groups? It's just not clear. And again, the sorting of things needs to be memorized per app. Menus are not a good solution and ribbons aren't either, but for now we haven't found something to replace them just yet, apart from maybe not needing them altogether, but that's not really possible for more complex apps. Honestly, the only thing I can imagine here is some variant of the HUD the Unity desktop introduced a while back. You get one big button or shortcut, you type what you want to do, and the app offers the relevant features. Easy to click, descriptive, works with voice control with the keyboard, and could be unified at the OS level, so you could start tasks, create files, and display the UI blocks from apps that I've talked about previously, from one single shortcut or button. And if this reminds you of AI assistants, it's kind of what I have in mind, except that the AI assistant would be OS-wide and all apps would plug into it, instead of having each app come with its own AI assistant, which makes things as complicated or weird as just using menu bars. So for example, you could have an OS-wide button, you just type create a new image 1920 by 1080 with three layers on top and the logo of my company, and you start a task with that, with the image editing UI block on top of it, and then if you need to add a filter or something else to your image, you could just press the same shortcut, type what kind of stuff you want to do, and it would either suggest a menu entry or just do it for you if you have this sort of capability. And of course, people who don't want to type everything they do could just have keyboard shortcuts to do the things that they're used to, or they just have the UI block with all the features that they need that they could fold and fold and just select with a mouse if they prefer. Finally, windows and title bars. We use app-based metaphors right now, so we need to have a visual representation of each application. Whether it is a floating window or it is tiled, we have windows that we move, that we resize, maximize, minimize, or close. Again, this is not super efficient. Resizing windows to fit a task isn't great. Title bars are small and finicky to grab and drag, to the point we had to implement keyboard shortcuts to drag from any point in the window. Window buttons are small and are moving targets depending on where you place the window. If you tile things, then you will also need to adjust the layout multiple times to have tiles that have enough space for what you want to do. It's not a great metaphor, but we don't have anything new. If we continue on the task-focused metaphor that I started talking about, you would get rid of app windows entirely. You would open just a canvas. For example, if you want to browse the web, you open a web browsing canvas with the web browser UI element. If at some point you decided that you wanted to take notes on what you were browsing, you could just ask your general HUD or use a favorites HUD or whatever else you need to launch a task and say, I want to take notes on this web page. And then your browser would slide to the side. You get a text-based canvas if you start with text-based tools and the UI for editing text. If you drag an image onto the thing, it automatically transforms into a rich text canvas. If you add a video on top of it, it transforms into another file type. 
and it would just evolve, displaying the right UI blocks all the time without ever needing to open a new app, switch different apps, save a file, open it in something else. You would just have a workflow based, a task based environment instead of an app based environment, at which point you don't really need windows and title bars anymore because everything you do is just a movable canvas with floating UI blocks. And of course, all the criticism of these older UI paradigms are subjective. I'm analyzing them from a UI and UX standpoint. I think we could do better than old menus, old windows, the old desktop, but they all have the value of being well known. People are used to them and they know how to interact with those things. Moving to an entirely new metaphor would probably lose a bunch of people in the process. So I'm not saying my ID is better or perfect. Now, let me know down in the comments if you agree with me on these older UI elements, if you don't, and if my ideas look like something you might be interested in, or not at all, or if you have other ideas. The comment section is here for all of this. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about our sponsor. If you're a Linux user and you're looking to replace your current computer, maybe it's time to stop looking at devices that ship with Windows pre-installed and trying to put your favorite distro on it and hoping everything runs. Maybe it's time to look at computers that were made to run Linux. For example, from Tuxedo Computers, our sponsor. They have a wide range of devices that should cover every price point and every need, whether you need a laptop, desktop, a workstation, a gaming laptop, whatever, they have everything. You can tweak and change all the components. You can personalize your computer with your own keyboard layout, with your own logo engraved on the lid of your laptop. You can open the devices, repair them and upgrade them. And they all have fantastic Linux support. So you know things will work. I only use Tuxedo computers these days to run the channel or to game. So if you want to try them out, I left a link to them in the description below and uh, I heavily recommend them. They're really, really good. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. All those buttons under the video immensely help the channel. And if you want to help it even more, I left links in the description to ways you can support it financially and you get a bunch of extra benefits on top of that. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.